morning, everyone. Um, so uh, Lisa and I are going to um, talk, talk you through this session. Um, so Lisa will start by talking about uh, a background to patient experiences work um, and introduce you to some of the work that has been done in the UK. And in the second part of this presentation, I will talk more specifically about uh, our work here in Kenya with regards to understanding the experiences of mothers of hospitalized sick newborns. So I uh, hand over to Lisa. Thank you, Dorothy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dorothy, if you could click onto the next slide, please. Great, thank you. So um, the idea of this session is uh, for Dorothy and I to give you an overview of some of the approaches to patient experiences research um, that, that we have done and that we're engaged with uh, testing um, through a, a project called RESPECT, which Dorothy is going to give you a little bit more detail about a bit later on in the presentation. So we've just had a really interesting insight into one way of capturing uh, patient experiences uh, and thinking about the ways that they can feed into um, improving the quality of healthcare delivery and healthcare systems. And I, I want to give you um, some insights into, into another approach. So patient uh, experiences can um, reflect the range of introductions that patients have with the care system all the way along their, their care pathway, as, as we've just heard. Um, and uh, as Sassy mentioned in her uh, opening talk, they are now considered to be an, a, an integral component of healthcare quality. Um, there are many different aspects that of healthcare delivery that patients value highly when, when they seek care and when they receive care. Uh, and some obvious examples that I'm sure we'll all be familiar with just through our own, our own lives are getting timely appointments, getting easy access to information about their health condition, um, their the projected care pathway and, and their treatment plan. Um, and uh, perhaps most importantly in this list, good communication with, with healthcare providers. So that's a flavor of what's, what's important about the patient experience. Um, next slide, please, Dorothy. Um, and it's increasingly understood that uh, a rich understanding of patient experiences is a key component of uh, moving towards patient-centered care, which, as you know, is, is, is one of the things that we are particularly and increasingly fo focused on in, in, in high quality care. And there is a growing evidence base that suggests that patient-centered organizations, so organizations that have genuinely built their, uh, their care provision on patient-centered care and understanding the perspectives of patients can uh, have multiple effects, imp including improving staff experience, staff morale and retention that um, I, I know is a real issue in, in Kenya and it's, it's also a very pressing issue here in, um, in the UK as well. And patient-centered organizations can also um, report shorter lengths of stay, which obviously has all sorts of consequences for both uh, the economics of the, of the uh, healthcare provider itself, but also the experiences of, of, of patients and their families. So patient, people's experiences can help us appreciate what's working well, what needs to change, and how, about, how to go about making those improvements. In the book that, um, that Sassy uh, mentioned in her first slide, edited by Sue Zeebland and others, there are a range of different uh, approaches to capturing uh, patient experiences that are, that are detailed. Um, and, and some of them are, are, are focus groups. Uh, we've, we've heard about the process mapping. And the approach that, uh, that Dorothy and I have been using is, is doing in-depth uh, interviews with uh, patients about their experiences of health and illness, or in, in particular, in Dorothy's case, interviewing mothers of, with experiences of, of having preterm birth. And using patient experience data um, that is rigorously analyzed, uh, you know, high quality data that's carefully collected and rigorously analyzed, can help inform practice and health system change and improvement in um, low and middle income countries. There has been a developing evidence base for these impacts in high income countries and Dorothy and I and, and others are, are very keen to develop the evidence base for demonstrating the impact that these can also have in low middle income countries. 
Uh, and um, one of the, the key things that we think is, is important is this, is that evidence um, generated to improve care can also be used in, in other healthcare improvement settings. So it's not just data that can be used to, um, to improve care in, in, in you know, one hospital in Nairobi, but can actually be used um, to uh, improve care at scale. So um, uh, Dorothy is going to talk more about the work that we have been doing in Kenya that builds on her doctoral research. Uh, but one study that I just wanted to mention before I hand back over to Dorothy is, is work that's been done in high income countries to gain insights into the experiences of parents who have uh, neonates uh, admitted to the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, and um, through a rich understanding of those parent experiences, um, those uh, we've been able to develop uh, a more personalized care for sick newborns that are that are genuinely meeting the needs of, of families. So this study um, mentioned here, which is the poppy study parents of premature babies uh, in the UK. Uh, the results from this study that was led by um, Sophie Staniseska um, contributed to an understanding of parent needs and what they value, which in particular uh, was clear information, receiving emotional support and practical guidance and encouragement in caring for their baby. So I'm gonna hand over now to Dorothy, who's going to give you a bit more detail about the work that she and I have been um, uh, undertaking in Kenya. Thank you. Right, um, so on this second part of the presentation, uh, I will focus more on uh, what's been happening in Kenya with regards to patient experiences. Um, our work primarily focuses on uh, newborn care uh, within hospitals in, uh, Kenya, in the Kenyan setting. Um, so the first um, set of qualitative work that we conducted, and this was part of my DFL study, was uh, in looking at the experiences or, and, and perceptions of mothers uh, with hospitalized sick newborns across two hospitals in Nairobi. Uh, with a focus on one public hospital and a faith-based hospital. Uh, apart from that, we also wanted to understand what roles do mothers play within the newborn unit. Um, and in doing this, we were able to uh, apply three main approaches. Um, the first one being a non-participant observation. Um, we were able to conduct over 600 hours of observations within uh, the newborn unit. And this covered both day and night shifts um, and weekdays and also uh, weekend uh, shifts. Um, and this approach was very uh, useful in terms of enabling us to uh, get a detailed understanding of the context within which care is provided uh, across the two sectors uh, with an understanding that this, this two these two sectors have got different um, um, funding uh, approaches, different structures, um, different st staffing um, and, and um, different processes. Uh, we were also able to observe uh, the roles that the mothers play within the newborn units in terms of understanding what do they actually do, at what point do they actually take on uh, the role, such as feeding, uh, bathing the babies, um, and also understand how are they actually prepared to take on these roles. Uh, of importance was also uh, uh, or in that you're able to understand the interactions, not just amongst the mothers, but also uh, between the mothers and the staff across the two hospital settings. Um, the second uh, approach that we used was uh, in-depth interviews at the point of discharge. Uh, we were able to interview uh, a total of 40 mothers across the two hospitals, that is 20 in each hospital. Um, and this was important in terms of enabling us to follow up on issues that we were observing within the newborn units uh, during the uh, non-participant observation phase. Um, and by interviewing the mothers, they were able to talk about what roles they played and the perceptions about uh, their involvement in care and some of the fears and concerns that they had while inside the newborn unit. Uh, the last method that we used was the storytelling or narrative interview, uh, where we were able to visit a subset of mothers two to three weeks post discharge in their homes. Um, and what we saw was um, 
in terms of methodological approaches, in terms of um, the the uh, the value that um, uh, having storytelling exercises with the mothers in an environment where they're more relaxed post discharge outside the hospital setting played. Uh, in terms of their ability to openly talk about not just the positives, but also the negatives uh, in terms of uh, how they were treated within the hospital setting. Um, so this is a lesson that we continue to carry forward as we continue engaging with patient experiences uh, research in Kenya. Um, a key output of the qualitative work was us piloting um, uh, the video recording of narrative interviews with mothers, uh, which is an approach that Lisa and colleagues at, at the Health Experiences Research Group uh, at Oxford have used over the years. Uh, but this is something that we wanted to test whether it uh, could be acceptable and would be something that would, be work, would work within our Kenyan uh, setting. Um, so we were able to interview a couple of mothers and uh, produce a, a pilot uh, a trigger film uh, here in Kenya and it's uh, accessible uh, on this link. So the current work, which is building on from the uh, initial qualitative work uh, and my DFL work is what we call the RESPECT study. And what we want to do is uh, uh, collect uh, additional uh, narrative interviews uh, with mothers of preterm babies and explore how we can actually use these experiences to improve care. Um, so we are aiming to, uh, we've been interviewing mothers across uh, uh, public hospitals and also some who we have recruited through support groups uh, within, uh, uh, within Nairobi, uh, basically to identify uh, what are their needs um, and how can mothers uh, be supported within newborn units. Um, and one of the key issues that is emerging from uh, the narrative interviews that we've conducted so far is the need for adequate and timely um, information for the mothers. Um, so how are we going to incorporate um, mother's voices or the experiences of the mothers into uh, quality improvement strategies? What we propose to do uh, in the RESPECT study is uh, adopt uh, the experience-based co-design approach uh, where we will incorporate uh, the narratives of the mothers into quality improvement uh, uh, strategies. Um, and uh, experience-based co-design is an approach that enables staff and uh, patients uh, to co-design, basically come together, work together uh, in a participatory manner uh, to come up uh, with interventions um, that can improve uh, care quality. Um, so the first step is uh, uh, setting up uh, the study, which involves a lot of engagement with the hospitals and the mothers and the staff, engaging with the staff. And it's, it, it's um, powerful that we are working uh, closely with the uh, uh, colleagues, uh, one of one Sassi, who are working with the nurses uh, and also able to learn about the nurses' experiences what Lisa and I are focusing on is on the patient experiences. So talking to mothers um, and video recording their narratives. And then um, uh, having a, a series of co-design workshops where we bring together mothers um, and nurses uh, in different um, workshop settings um, where we'll be able to share some of the key touch points emerging from the narrative interviews that we've been conducting in phase one of the RESPECT study uh, and produce short video clips, which we'll share with the, with the mothers and the nurses to get their feedback about uh, the key emerging uh, themes or key emerging issues of interest that uh, we are identifying from the stories of the mothers. And from that, together um, design um, um, audiovisual training materials and also um, information and ed education materials that can support mothers um, who have uh, uh, sick newborns or premature babies uh, within our hospital settings in Nairobi. Um, the next step would be uh, to be able to test um, some of the audiovisual training materials and the uh, information uh, support materials that uh, will be co-designed co by the mothers and the nurses in two, uh, uh, two hospitals in Nairobi, 
um, and then uh, we'll be able to uh, also evaluate that using both uh, qualitative and quantitative approaches. Um, so before the rollout of or, or, or the testing of the material that we'll have uh, developed, uh, we are going to be able to have a baseline data collection well, where we um, interview the mothers, um, administer questionnaires um, to the nursing staff, um, and then go in and implement or pilot um, the intervention that will be co-designed by the mothers and the nurses. And after that, have a final phase where we uh, do a post uh, implementation um, uh, uh, assessment of the intervention that uh, will be developed. So that is a plan that we hope to uh, undertake uh, with experience-based co-design uh, uh, sometime in uh, the early, the first quarter of uh, 2022. Uh, yeah. And thank you.